So that's the thing right there. First mobile prototype. Initiating. It is Monday and in this vlog I will show you my progress when it gets to my flame fist. This thing right there. And as you can see I made it mobile, somewhat mobile. At this moment I need to carry these two adapters with me. White one for the 5 volt and black one for the 12 volt for the valve. Sadly I cannot connect this thing to the 5 volt rail. It would be perfect but check this out. It is now connected to the 5 volt rail and to the relay and well, so let's get it to activate. As you can see, there is something happening. I think the power is dropping and the Arduino is resetting. But as you saw, well, it would basically work, but sadly not on the same rail. So this thing would need yet another separate power supply. So I will just set this one aside for the moment. So let's get to this abomination of a circuit. This green pin is a safety and it will switch between the menu where you can modulate everything, every setting, you know. Plug it back in to activate it. Again, I will replace this soon with this switch and I will get to a more in-depth explanation for everything. There's a 12 volt rail right there. It's just for the valve. The power supply for the Arduino and for the uh, for this five volt rail comes from this breadboard power supply. USB goes to the Arduino and the five volt goes to the five volt rail. So all in all, it's, it's kind of insane, but well, let's just try it on. So that's the thing right there first. Mobile prototype and I'm utilizing the valve to kind of grab it. I have a strap right here and I probably need another one back here and now it's activating at 1G of acceleration and 1G deceleration. I brought that down to make it easy and yeah as you can see it's working and now well let's actually test it with pressurized air. So I got myself a second strap, it's looking crazy. But I had to realize a sad thing because I was only able to get a connection piece like that. And with a that said, I can't connect it to my compressor because it would need, the valve would need that. So yeah, dang it. And that means I have only one way to test it to find out if it's working and it is with the actual gas. Okay, I'm getting kind of nervous. It's a bit early for testing like that, but power supply, got myself a fire extinguisher, got myself a bit of lighter fluid, and this A-frame, lighter fluid will go in there. I will light it up and then punch it, basically. But first I will basically dry test it, and then I will, yeah, let's, oh my God. Let's put it on. Uh. Let's power it up. Okay. Oh heck. Guess. Let me change the belt time to yeah, let's say 80, 80 milliseconds. Just a short pulse. So, oh my god, I actually need something protect my fingers, I guess. This glove should do. Just how? Hey, hell yeah. Okay, perfect. Heck yeah. Let's connect the gas tube. Oh yeah. I messed up the get. Oh god. There we go. Now we're talking. Oh god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Let's bring it down more. Let's bring it down to 40. Okay. Let's get a bit of lighter fluid in there. 
Okay, let's get a bit of pressure. That should do. Let's put that aside. Oh my god, it's getting real. It is actually getting real. Oh my god. Okay, that's already it. More fluid. Oh crap. There's a leak. There's a leak somewhere, so that's bad. Whoa. Oh my god. I think I'm ready to bring it up. Okay, it's up to 120. Okay, there is a leak somewhere. Something is definitely leaking and I'm pretty sure it's because of this tube connection. But other than that, it's, it's working and it's crazy. Well, that was simply amazing. The next steps are obviously to make this tight and then I need to ramp up the pressure to get a better fireball. I will also step up the tank size, go with bigger bottles and I will uh, also switch out this thing. Well, I will just use something else. And now, well, actually let's do it right now. Let's go through this setup bit by bit so let me show you well yeah that's my mobile setup and as you can see it's just cardboard and i fixed most of the components onto this cardboard with double-sided duct tape this thing right there that's in our key component well this thing a mosfet transistor and i already explained how i actuate the solenoid valve in my solenoid valve tutorial check it out if you missed it and in this tutorial i used a tiny transistor and it obviously blew up couldn't handle the, the current and now I got myself quite a few of transistors that are able to handle this current easily actually and as expected as I said you just need to exchange this transistor and it will work fine so that's basically the valve part I also thought that my LCD came broken but you actually need to fine-tune the contrast and that's that was a pain but I figured it out but it's not that difficult but you, you need to know it and I'm not using this this limit switch push button thing as a safety as i said i just need to connect this wire to the ground in time i will put this button in between so that i can actuate it you know that i need to press it to activate it as it says on this screen take it out go to the menu that's the valve time right there and i use these three buttons to program it with the first one i can cycle through the menu through the options and with the R2 I can, whoops, oh my god, yeah, faulty contact right there. With the R2 I can cycle through the values basically, where, let me, let me get to the swipe. So activate swipe, let's activate it on, let's activate it and now it will say active and swipe. Let's change the valve time to 160. Let's make it active again and now it says 160 with swipe activated. This thing right there is the accelerometer and I'm using the Y coordinate as you can see here to actuate everything. That's the valve right there for spark generator. This is not in use currently. And well back here is the Arduino and power supply stuff like that. This isn't all that complicated. The code is kind of long, so let's take a look at that as well. I of course got a lot of inspiration from this original avatar Flame Fist, but other than that I only use the wire library and the liquid crystal library for the LCD. Other than that it's all my code. Only six pins right there. This stuff is for the LCD. The biggest pain was definitely the accelerometer, this MPU 650 component but I somehow figured that out as well. There we have the requirements to actuate it. You need to accelerate with 1g and decelerate with minus 1. That's the stuff for the swipe and I will cover this when it's time to cover this. And these other integers are basically for the programming. The punch cheater is yet another interesting thing that I came up with. It's a safety against cheaters. It's on zero 
to make it easy to activate it but later on I will put this to 60 probably so that you know it's safe against jitters. This code is to set up the accelerometer. This is to calculate the g-force and the RPM. I will use the RPM for the swipe one day. That's the fire function and this is pretty much the same thing as the code on Hexer.io from the original. The control is basically the menu where I can program you know the valve time, flame time, where I can set the increments, where I can activate and deactivate the swipe, all that good stuff, all the accelerations. So that's a lot of code right there. Yeah, here I have zero, okay, so I could actually deactivate these two. This was mainly used for debugging and, you know, for programming it. Pin setup right there, what else is there? Oh yeah, that's the main loop right there. These are for the buttons. And if they go low, well, if the safety goes low, then it will actually activate. And if the safety is high, then you can access the menu. And when it goes low, then this will, it will first of all declare that it's active now on the screen. With this, I access the accelerometer and calculate the numbers. This was for programming it. And lastly, this is again very similar to the original code. I just check if the g-force is higher than the punch acceleration and also I wait for a certain time and I also check if the deceleration is higher than the required force. There's a bit more to that, including the jitter and everything, to make sure that it only activates when you want it to activate and that is after a, a correct punch. For testing this prototype, I set the numbers low because, you know, it's super fragile, it's just cardboard. But once this is a stable unit, then I will go up with the numbers again and I'm definitely looking forward to that. So again, next up is Bigger tank, make it tight. Yeah, these are the next steps, definitely. Oh, and I'm also working on designing a shield for the Arduino to get rid of all these stupid cables so that I can plug it in and then I just need to soldier on the components and well, it would be as easy as that. But that's enough progress for today. Smash that like button the way I thankfully did not smash this prototype. Bang the bell like crap. Ha! Check the recent news on chrisviral.com and yeah, that's it for today. I will see you tomorrow.